Good morning. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I'm an addiction recovery coach, life coach, and host of this show, Take Your Life Back Today radio show. You can also see the YouTube version on YouTube channel, Take Your Life Back Today show. Happy Friday. Weekend is upon us. And the gift everybody needs, God's finest hours are here. Jesus Christ was God's finest hour. The lives of great men and women are often recalled by the single moment that de defines them. A snapshot that captures their special passion and typifies their most lasting contributions. We remember Abraham Lincoln for his brief but powerful Gettysburg Address where he envisioned a nation of people, by the people, and for the people. Theologian Martin Luther King will be forever immortalized for uh, nailing his 95 thesis to the door of the written burg of all St. Chapels, ushering in the Protestant uh, reformation of Michelangelo. It will be considered himself as a sculpture for perhaps the best known and most lasting work of art that was done from atop a high scaffold, painting the ceiling of Rome's Sistine Chapel. Winston Churchill captured the hearts of Britain and the world when he boldly declared as bombs fell on his beloved London, this will be our finest hour. Single snapshots like these can sum up the greatest moments of great lives. I wonder if we were to consider our all-powerful, all-knowing supreme God what his finest hour will be. Would it be his creation of heavens? and the earth by uh, the very power of his spoken word, or well, the dazzling creativity he displayed in crafting of every living thing on earth. Some might argue that God's greatest hour was the creation of man from the dust and of woman from the man, but I would suggest that there was something even greater than that. As we celebrate this season, uh, coming up in the next few months, the coming of God in the form of baby born in Bethlehem. I believe that God's finest hour began with the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. Think about that. If we are honest with ourselves, each of us would admit a deep longing that cannot be satisfied, a deep inner pain and emptiness that will not go away. Education can't satisfy it. Career and money can't quiet, uh, uh, quiet it. Relationships can't fill it, and drugs or alcohol can't make it disappear. It always, it's always there because we are made by God and for God, and because of sin we are separated from Him. We know we need Him, and we long to be made right with Him. We just don't know how. The coming of Christ was the beginning of God's finest hour because it addresses this awful separation. God so loved us so so much that he didn't leave us separated from him, trapped in our own sin and its devastating effects. He loved us so much that he came to us. God himself came to a virgin named Mary and placed his life inside her womb. And that child who was born of Mary the one born in a manger in the little town of Bethlehem. That child was called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And it didn't stop there, my friends. The Apostle Paul wrote of Jesus, He appeared in a body, was vindicated by the Spirit, and was seen by angels and preached among the nations, was believed on by the world, was taken up in glory in 1 Timothy 3.16. Friends, Jesus Christ was God's finest hour. He was born to us in flesh, lived a perfect, sinless life, then went to the cross and suffered and died in our place. God placed on him every sin that will ever be committed, and Jesus willingly took our punishment. And the, uh, then three days later, the Spirit of God raised Jesus from the dead, breaking forever the power of sin in Jesus the price has been paid in him we have forgiveness and through him we are welcomed back into fellowship with the holy God so is there a snapshot of a great great hour I believe there is 
and it lies in the story Jesus himself told, the story of the prodigal son. It's recorded in Luke 15. A wealthy landowner had two sons, and the youngest demanded his inheritance while his father was still living, left home, and squandered every cent in wild living. When he was at the very lowest, he remembered that even the slaves in his father's house were well cared for, so he decided to return home and, not daring to hope, he might be received back as a son, but planning to beg to be allowed home as a slave. When he returned, his father recognized him from a long way off, and before the son could apologize and plead for charity, the father ran to him, embraced him, smothered him with kisses, and said, All is forgiven. Many, many wrongs had been done by this wayward son, but all the father, all the father cared about was his return. If you could hold in your memory one snapshot of God's finest hour this season coming up, will you hold this one, the God of the universe, that loved you so much that through his son Jesus Christ, he has made a way for you to come back home. And when he sees you coming, he will run to you, wrap his arms around you, and welcome you. Welcome you home, making his finest hour your finest hour. I'll see you at home one day. Call me at 844 help Together we can help each other take our lives back. Be good to yourselves and always be good to each other. And a simple smile to a total stranger will help that stranger forever. And it can change your life. God's finest hour is welcoming you home one day in heaven. I hope to see you there. And may God bless each and every one of you. And take good care.